Hi, I'm Jerry the Snake Man, and today we're coming to you live from the snake room again. Um, we're going to give you some advice on how to feed a snake that doesn't want to eat. Um, the snake that I'm going to use today is actually a snake that I'm babysitting. Um, the snake was brought to me last year. The lady um, said that she had a milk snake. Uh, she was going on vacation. Would I watch it for her for a month? And I said, sure, no problem. She told me that the snake wasn't eating for her. She would take it out. She would put it in a feeding container. Um, it would only eat, if when it did eat, it would only eat very small uh, little hopper uh, fuzzies. It wouldn't eat hoppers and that uh, she was having issues with it eating. So she brought the snake over to me. She said she fed it separately in a, a feeding enclosure. I told her, just bring me the snake in its tank and I'll watch it for you for the month. I brought the snake home and the first thing I did was I offered it a frozen thawed uh, hopper, which is basically a, a, a small mouse. And the snake, uh, as you can see from the video that I took, I fed it right in its, in its enclosure the very day that I received it. Um, the snake was had to tease it a little bit, and then the snake took it, grabbed it by the butt. Um, it did drop it, though, after it started to eat it. But first, it dropped it. I picked the mouse up. I turned it around. I teased it a little more. It grabbed it by the head, and it uh, swallowed it and ate the, uh, the mouse with no problem. One of the things people say is that, oh, I'm afraid that the snake might ingest some of the uh, bedding. There's no problem with the snake ingesting bedding. It will pass right through them. If that was the case, a snake eating some bedding or some dirt or soil or something, uh, the snakes would never survive in the wild because when they eat, they do eat a lot of the dirt and stuff. That's with the mouse. The other problem is, though, is too, is when you thaw out frozen thawed mice, a lot of people will do it in hot water, which makes the, the mouse wet. You make the mouse wet, and bedding will definitely stick to a wet mouse, which will actually cause the snake to ingest more bedding than it should. I simply take out what I'm going to feed the snake the day before. I let it thaw out that way naturally. This way the prey is, is uh, room temperature and it's dry when I give it to the snake. The other thing as well too is a lot of people will say, oh, you got to make sure that the, that the uh, mouse is warm because the snake won't eat unless the mouse is warm. Well, this milk, uh, milk snake that I'm feeding uh, doesn't have any heat sensors. He doesn't know if that mouse is warm or still frozen solid. So having the mouse to be warm is of no concern or issue specifically with this snake. Um, it does have sometimes an issue with uh, boas or pythons or pit vipers that sense the heat. But even though generally um, I have no problem feeding them, they'll take room temperature rodents without any issues whatsoever. Yes, I'm sure there are some you have to heat them up or warm them up above room temperature so they'll eat them. But I have really never found that to be an issue with me. Uh, the other thing is too, feeding in its a separate enclosure. Um, I've found that if I take a snake out of its enclosure, I handle it for a few seconds or a, f or a few minutes, and then I try to feed him that. Um, I've broken his feed mode. He's in more of a curiosity mode. He's not looking to eat. So sometimes the best thing to do is, uh, like I said, when you feed, take him out of his enclosure, put him in a feeding enclosure, you pretty much a lot of times lost that interest of him wanting to eat. Um, so when you feed him right in his enclosure, he's, he's in a feeding mode. He feels secure and safe as an enclosure and he will generally eat without too many issues. People are like, well, if you feed him an enclosure, he's going to want to bite you. Every time you go in, he's going to think there's food coming in. That is not true. Okay, if I take him out and I put him into a feeding enclosure, yes, he's, he is going to learn at that point that when he's in that feeding enclosure, food is coming in. And there's more of a chance of me getting bit while I'm trying to feed him in his feeding enclosure because he thinks he knows food's coming in there. Plus, after he's eaten his food and I go to move him back, he's still in a feeding mode. So when I go to move him back, he's liable to try to strike at me because he thinks he's food because he's in a feeding mode right now. When I put him in, when I feed him as an enclosure, um, he takes the food from me and I don't have to mess with him now until the next day or whenever I have to go back into his enclosure again. So he'll be out of that feeding mode by the time I have to deal with that snake a second time when I do it in his own enclosure. Um, 
again, if the only reason I ever go to his enclosure is to feed him, yes, maybe he will get the idea that food's coming in, but you shouldn't be only going in there to feed him. You should be going in to change the water. You should be going in to clean him. You should be going in there um, if you want to handle him. Uh, I go in there when I have to pack him up for shows. So the only reason that, um, that's not the only reason that I open up their enclosures and go into it is to hand them food um, so they don't associate it with that. Okay, so basically feeding outside in a separate enclosure is not a good idea. Feed them in their own enclosures and watch this video and you're going to see how this snake, the first day I had him with no special basking lights or extra room temperature uh, heat, he's at my snake room temperature, which at the time the video was taken was probably around 85 degrees. As you can see, it took a little bit of teasing with the, with the hopper, uh, but he did eat it with no problem. So watch this video and if you like what you see, like us on YouTube. If you got any comments, comments. If you got any questions, feel free. At the end of the video, you're going to see contact information where you can get a hold of me and you can ask me questions and I'll try to answer them for you. So I hope you enjoy this version of Snake Clips.